It's not uncommon for chefs to make mistakes, even on Hell's Kitchen. But sometimes, you've just gotta wonder if they even finished culinary school. Just like this time, when one chef misunderstood the entire theme of the challenge. And do you know what makes things even worse? The fact that none of her teammates stepped in to correct her. Well, meet Seide Dancy from Season 13, who had a pretty poor start in the competition. She eventually started to step up her game though. However, I'm not sure what happened to her in the 8th episode when she totally messed up who the customers were going to be. You see, Hell's Kitchen hosted a dog show, and just like any hosted event, both teams had to go through a challenge first. Prepare a stunning tasting menu ahead of the event tomorrow evening. This was Seide's first challenge on the blue team, and I'm sure she wanted to prove to her new teammates that she had what it took. Unfortunately, instead of showing her talent, she put the exact opposite on display. In this challenge, both teams had 45 minutes in which they had to make two appetizers and three entrees. While everybody had a clear idea of what the customers would like, Seide somehow assumed that they were actually cooking for dogs. It was the dog show challenge after all. So, she decided to make a braised beef dish for the dogs. Okay, we have to make dog food. I've never done this before. But no matter how dumb Seide's mistake was, what really pissed me off was how Steve Rosenthal and Brian Gallagher decided to not say anything to her to stop her from making such a major mistake. She knows we don't have to cook for the dogs, right? Now, I have no idea how they expected to win the challenge as a team when they couldn't even support each other. But honestly, that's neither here nor there. What's really got me scratching my head is what made Seide feel that they were going to be cooking for the dogs. One Reddit user pointed out that it could have been the result of poor judgment due to lack of sleep, a sudden change in teams, and the general high stakes and pressure of Hell's Kitchen. Still, that's got to be the worst way to be welcomed to a new team, right? After 45 minutes, when everybody finished their dishes, Seide realized how much she had screwed up. I look around and I realize these are human portions. I thought we were cooking for dogs. When Chef Ramsay noticed Seide's dish, he was dumbfounded. Does that sound fucking ridiculous? It looks like a dog shat all over my plate. Fortunately for her, Seide was saved from secondhand embarrassment in front of the guest judges since she got to sit out because the blue team was up a person. Whose dish are we dropping? Seide's. Seide. Oof, barely got out of that one by the skin of her teeth. In a discussion about Seide's dog food, another Reddit user wrote about how this mistake never failed to crack them up. Let's not forget to mention how lucky she was for her dish to get dropped right before the judging. And they really echoed my shock that nobody stepped in to stop her. Another user continued by saying that Seide even made a few comments referencing dogs and that there was an ample opportunity to steer her in the right direction. What I really liked about this mistake was that Seide realized what a stupid thing she did. I mean, hey, at least she wasn't oblivious or accusatory, which is a lot more than I can say about a lot of the other contestants. Like, Seide owned her mistake through and through. My life. Despite the food being meant for the dogs, it looks like Seide still managed to impress some fans because this user was willing to give Seide's dog food a taste. He said that it looked like a decent beef casserole. It might have even been paired well with a side of rice. Well, at least she managed to survive the humiliation, unlike this next chef, who was performing great until he did the dumbest thing ever. If you ask me, I think Boris Polshuk from Season 8 was one of the few contestants we've seen on the show who actually wasn't toxic. However, that doesn't stop me from wondering why he did something so dumb during his first service at the pizza station. No doubt, Boris got his team off to a great start, but as Trev McGrath sent his overdressed salad to the pass, things changed drastically real quick. Do you honestly think they came here for that? No. While the blue team failed to serve any of their appetizers, the red team was able to send out almost half their appetizers out. But that was until Melissa Donnie messed up big time. It's raw, Melissa! While Chef Ramsay was chewing out Melissa for her mistakes, Boris did the most unthinkable thing ever. He mimicked Chef Ramsay. What was he thinking? That Chef Ramsay wouldn't hear him? Well, as expected, Ramsay heard Boris crystal clear, and the man now had to face a new challenge, Chef Ramsay's wrath. So I'm telling her about a raw pizza, and you'll mimic me at the back. Lewis was right. You don't mock the famous chef no matter what. And just when you thought it was over, Boris had more coming. You fucking take the piss out of me one more time. Kiss your fucking ass goodbye. To see Boris actually accept that he shouldn't have done it was actually quite refreshing. Good on you for owning up to it, at least. What's more, he even went to the extent of saying that he didn't mean any disrespect. And I meant no disrespect. What can I say? I'm losing my mind. 
Well, I think he was only trying to lighten the mood, but come on. Of course something like that was doomed to backfire. One Reddit user, who is clearly a major fan of Boris, chipped in to say that Boris didn't intend to mimic Ramsey. He probably just got caught up in the moment. Well, I think Boris has quite a few followers out there, because turns out, his elimination was pretty upsetting for a lot of viewers. While almost everyone on the blue team was at each other's throats, Boris was the only one who had the courage to take the high road. Remember when Raj Branston came to help with his station but only made everything worse? Boris didn't throw him to the wolves when Chef Ramsay asked him about the pizzas. Although Boris was frustrated as hell with Raj, and rightfully so, he saved him from needing to face Chef Ramsay. One user mentioned how Boris smoothly deflected the blame off of Raj and took it upon himself, and the man deserves a ton of credit just for that. Well, either way, Chef Ramsay's decisions ultimately come down to performance, which is exactly what this next contestant decided to screw up for their whole team. Imagine what it feels like to be responsible for that one mistake that cost the entire team their win. That's exactly what Elizabeth Bianchi from Season 9 had to go through. In Episode 6, Hell's Kitchen hosted a high school reunion. It was 20 years later for the post-grad Culver City High School's class of 91. And any reunion worth its salt means good food, and what better way to choose the dishes that would get put on the menu than a challenge? To get things started, Paul Niederman and Elizabeth joined Chef Ramsay to discuss it with the committee members. Towards the end of the meeting, the committee decided to go with a fun Hawaiian theme with pork and scallops as the featured dishes. We were thinking maybe we could recreate something Hawaiian. But it didn't take them very long to throw in a curveball. During the discussion, one of the committee members mentioned that she was a pescatarian who didn't eat meat in any form. As the discussion carried on, Elizabeth started to sweat as she had never cooked Hawaiian food before. But I've done like Asian. They do taste extremely similar. But that's what teams are for, right? Well, not so much in this case. The problem here was that Elizabeth comfortably equated Hawaiian cuisine with Asian cuisine. Now, I know that Hawaii is a huge tourist spot for Japanese people, and there's been a decent bit of cross-pollination in their culinary scenes. But Hawaii's history goes way further back than that. Don't even get me started about the dumb question Elizabeth dropped during the discussion. How do you guys feel about combining meat and seafood on the same plate? Come on, Elizabeth. Are you serious? In fact, everyone was confused by her question, including Paul. She just said that she doesn't eat meat. Elizabeth's in La La Land. Anyway, once they were back, both the contestants discussed their menu with their teams, and that's when Elizabeth did something unthinkable. Okay, so they definitely said they wanted Asian food appetizer. Bacon wrap, like scallops is really nice. Yup, Elizabeth gave her entire team the wrong information. But they were oblivious that she had doomed them before they had even started. They went ahead and cooked their hearts out, only to realize that they'd been sprinting in the wrong direction the entire time. When Chef Ramsay announced the theme, the entire red team, except Elizabeth of course, was shocked. What the hell? I didn't hear anything about Hawaiian. I don't know where she came up with Asian. It's not surprising that the red team couldn't even get a single point up, while the blue team sailed to what was probably the easiest victory in Hell's Kitchen history. The problem with the red team was that nothing felt Hawaiian about it. Even though one of the dishes tasted great, it was rejected for having any lack of Hawaiian influence whatsoever. But that's not all. Elizabeth had failed to convey another important message. When the team served scallops with bacon to the pescatarian, well... Did you say bacon? Yes, bacon lardons. I'll have to pass. Like I said, the blue team was doing pretty well during this challenge. As long as they served something that had been in the same room as a pineapple, they probably would have been golden. Several Redditors couldn't believe how she could do this to her team. She just had to remember two pieces of information and communicate them, but she failed on both accounts. Some of them even went to the extent of calling her an iconic disaster. Maybe she assumed the judges wouldn't be too strict on the theme if the food was good? But the fact that one committee member couldn't even taste their food was a disrespect of the highest order. Well, if you thought it couldn't get any dumber than that, hold on to that thought. This next chef thought they could break the laws of physics. Yeah, let's see how well that goes. Wendy Liu from Season 1 had to have been one of that season's worst contestants. And this thought was further cemented when she gave a particularly ridiculous explanation to Chef Ramsay. In the third episode, Wendy was working at the appetizer station. That night, two internationally acclaimed food critics, Melissa Clark and Kate Crater, were in the dining area. So, obviously, making a great impression was really important. However, sending the appetizers took way longer than expected. One 
fucking missing lobster. Get it even. Let's go back in the pan and get it even. When Chef Ramsay went over to the blue team to check their progress, he saw that they still hadn't gotten their spaghetti boiled. And this was the reason for the lapse. Did you top it up with cold water? That's when Chef Ramsay asked Wendy if she topped it with cold water, and what she said left Chef Ramsay stunned. I thought cold water was supposed to boil faster than hot water. I don't even know where to begin with this. This one's got me stunned, you guys. Quite expectedly, the internet absolutely blew up after this episode aired. While most of the viewers made fun of her, one actually sympathized with her. Well, yeah, point taken, I guess. As far as I remember, most of the contestants in season 1 didn't have any culinary background. Wendy was an account manager and a very good example of how being passionate about cooking and being professional are two completely different things. Anyway, when Wendy finally got her spaghetti going, she failed to impress the critics. Melissa found it chewy, which wasn't a good start. Here you kind of taste like chewy lobster and then tomatoes and it doesn't come together. But when she was moved to the meat station, Wendy had a hard time even there. I think the reason why she had a hard time cooking the meat was because she was a vegetarian. I don't eat meat, so I don't cook it, and so I just was completely lost. It can be hard for someone to assess the time and temperature needed to cook something if you've never worked with it before, especially if you haven't eaten it. She had to rely on Ralph Pagano's feedback in order to make any sort of progress, and trust me, she was having a hard time. That's probably why all she was left with was a bunch of excuses. And we know how Chef Ramsay feels about excuses. Everything I tell you, you come back with the most pathetic answers. That was enough reason for the famous chef to believe that Wendy didn't have the willpower or hunger to work with them. I suggest you shut your mouth. Last chance. But this next chef had the potential to go further, but failed because of her uncontrollable anger. Meet Joy Parham Thomas from season 12, who despite being a jerk, was still a great chef. I mean, she was the first one to get a black jacket after she impressed Chef Ramsay and the guest judges with her winning dish. Even the famous chef had high expectations from her, but what she did on the second day of the black jacket dinner service was absolutely brainless. In episode 18, Hell's Kitchen invited the legendary Stan Lee for dinner, and it should go without saying that everyone was excited to see him, never mind serve him. Joy was at the fish station, and when the team moved on to the entrees, she seemed to communicate very well with Rochelle Bergman and Jason Zapoltis. Well, that was until she walked with her halibut, despite Rochelle not being ready with her dish. Yeah, let me know so I can cut my Wellington! Joy, I need the sauce first! Joy was livid when she forgot about the sauce, but with the muscles, it was clear that she had lost it. Joy, I've got no muscles in here, have you got them? If you remember, on the very first dinner service, Joy threw a tantrum after she got frustrated. But this display made that first service seem reasonable in comparison. Joy had really gone off the deep end. She managed to succeed on the second attempt, but failed to communicate. Naturally, that annoyed the famous chef. Whether you like it or not, you're just holding the whole kitchen up. However, instead of redeeming herself, she started to give Chef Ramsay an attitude. Joy, give me time. Can you tell me? 30 seconds, okay? Rule number one of Hell's Kitchen, never give the famous chef an attitude. Joy didn't step up her game even after that. And Jason, who was working at the garnish station, still needed 90 more seconds to get the garnishes ready. But that didn't stop Joy from walking with her halibut. I need the garnish for the halibut before the halibut. This led to Chef Ramsay pulling her aside, but rather than finally admitting her mistakes and getting back to work, she decided to escalate things. You wanna pick an argument? I'm ready. Can I finish cooking, Chef? Chef Ramsay did not like that. If you're in the mood, don't take it out of my food. I'm done. And with that, Joy lost it for the last time. That would be Melanie Finch and Rochelle begged her not to quit, but Joy stuck with her decision and walked out. Chef Ramsay followed her and called her out for being selfish. I mean, leaving her whole team behind like that is so unprofessional and she deserved to be called out for it. What a selfish attitude. One thing wrong and you run away. What followed was an argument of an even more massive scale. No, you're not telling me. No, you're not. You're arguing. Back in the dorms, after having a conversation with sous chef Andy about what happened, Joy came to her senses. She even thought about apologizing to Chef Ramsay, but then she decided against it for some reason. I need to tell Chef Ramsay I apologize wholeheartedly, but I don't know if I have the confidence to go in that kitchen. On Reddit, someone pointed out how on Joy's Insta, she wrote about why she left Hell's Kitchen. She wrote saying, production tried to f*** me over. It didn't excite people to see a black woman just put her head down and cook. They always find a black woman to villainize, and I wasn't gonna let that happen to me. 
Wait, 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 wait. Did she forget about Rock and Janelle? Moreover, she even got the chance to dine in with Rock after winning the black jacket. That should have been an unforgettable experience. In the same post, a user found the whole explanation and accusation ridiculous. The user also wrote, whether or not production targeted her is not the point since she still quit and walked out in front of everyone. Not to mention that Julia made it to fourth, Bobby made it to fifth, Rock won, Elise made it to third when she shouldn't have, Barbie made it to fourth, and fucking Janelle also won. Another user wrote that maybe Joy found story editor notes and not an actual script. The user also wrote, these shows are filming 24 seven for just under a month. That's a lot of footage to go through. So they have story editors on site to help keep things organized for the editors in post-production. My best guess is the paper Joy found were the story editor notes for the previous challenge. Not to say that Joy doesn't have some points. Reality TV is always going to be shady. The players are always the last thing on the producer's mind when filming these shows. Their focus is producing the best possible TV, so shady shit will always happen. Either way, I think up and quitting the show like that was a huge mistake. Vinny Fama was a contestant in the third season who ranked in 8th place. Vinny was one of the most unpleasant chefs to be around on Hell's Kitchen. Sure, he was a bad chef, but did he at least help his teammates? Nope, he sucked at that too. But the most annoying thing was that he was disrespectful towards Chef Ramsay. Obviously, on a show like this, that's unacceptable. On the first day during the signature dish challenge, Vinny was the first one to have his dish judged by Chef Ramsay. And he presented a chorizo crusted pink snapper. But the dish was so confusing that Chef Ramsay couldn't even find the snapper until Vinny told him where it was. After tasting it, Chef Ramsay was disappointed since it was way too hot. But Vinny decided to irritate Chef Ramsay even further by talking back to him. However, Chef Ramsay put him back in his place for his boldness by saying this. What a disappointment. I don't think so. I, now you want to argue. Later, during the next dinner service, Vinny was at the appetizer station. When he sent his spaghetti to the pass, it was so overcooked that it didn't look like pasta anymore. But Vinny did something even crazier after this. He began to laugh in Chef Ramsay's face. And I can't tell you how much Chef Ramsay hated this. Can you get a grip and just give me something? Is that possible? Yes, Chef. Now I'm gonna lose my rag in a minute. Later, when Vinny was making his risotto, he needed some more vegetable stock, but there wasn't any. So what did Vinny do? He simply added water. According to him, stock is made of water and vegetables are made of water, so it's all the same, right? But Chef Ramsay caught him in the act and was so furious that he did this. Stop it! Look at me now, okay? Get off the section! Sometime later, when Chef Ramsay asked Vinny if he was happy with washing pots and pans, he arrogantly claimed that he was. I mean, what was wrong with this guy? Anyway, post-dinner service, when Chef Ramsay was talking to him about his disappointing performance, rather than apologize, Vinny showed him attitude. I didn't know what you wanted. You didn't want to show me. So what did you want me to do? Two-faced, lazy little f And to think all of this happened on the first day, it's safe to assume that Vinny was going to be a pain in the butt. Vinny's behavior only got worse on the third day. At one point during the dinner service, he started to become really sluggish. Seeing this, Chef Ramsay grew really impatient. And when Vinny finally sent his dish to the pass, Ramsay noticed a raw egg randomly placed on the dish. The famous chef was so furious that he called the blue team over and asked them what he was holding in his hand. And just as he was asking everyone, out of nowhere, Chef Ramsay suddenly did this. What, what is that? What is that? <laughs> off with you. Ramsay then declared that he wasn't trusting Vinny anymore. And for the first time ever, Vinny started to tense up. If he kept fooling around like this, he'd be facing some major consequences. And that's exactly what happened the next day. During the dinner service, the blue team started with their first order of entrees. But Vinny needed 15 more minutes to cook the Wellingtons and this frustrated Chef Ramsay. Once he was done, Vinny failed to communicate his status with Chef Ramsay, but he did manage to bring the order of Wellingtons to the pass. Vinny had taken a shortcut to finish the order and this didn't escape sous chef Scott's prying eyes. Scott then revealed to Chef Ramsay that Vinny had flash grilled the Wellingtons in the oven and they were still rare. Hearing this, Ramsay was furious. Blue donkeys, come here! Touch that. It's rare! You don't care anymore, you know that. Vinny was then asked to make another one, and this time it had raw pastry since he had forgotten to trim it properly. Despite that, Vinny tried to bounce back, but the famous chef accused them of being inconsistent with all of the meat entrees. However, Vinny still believed that his new batch was perfect. But Chef Ramsay was curious to know how much food Vinny had wasted. 
So when Ramsey went over to check the garbage, you won't believe what he found. Oh, f me, senseless. That night, both teams lost the dinner service, and Vinny wasn't nominated, much to Chef Ramsey's surprise. But Ramsey wasn't gonna let him get away scot free. He overruled all of the other nominations from both teams and picked Vinny instead. This was Vinny's only chance to convince Chef Ramsey with a genuine plea. When Vinny declared himself as the most qualified chef, Ramsey asked him to show some humility and accept his mistakes. After a lot of thought, Vinny finally admitted that he didn't have control over the meat station. And this was all Chef Ramsey needed to eliminate him. Thanks to his poor performance and lack of responsibility, he was booted out. But this next chef, who remained idle throughout his entire time on the show, snubbed Chef Ramsey as he left. Mike Aresta was a contestant in season 12, who ranked in 17th place. Mike was also one of the worst chefs on Hell's Kitchen. He had absolutely no collaborative skills, and would disrespect not only his teammates, but also the famous chef. From day one, Mike's attitude was so awful that it was evidence that he didn't care about anything. During the signature dish challenge, he was the fourth person to have his dish judged by Chef Ramsay. And he went up against Kasia Zollicoffer. To prove his skills as a chef, Mike presented tortellini with tomatoes. Mike said that he had used packaged cheese instead of something fresh. Chef Ramsay was already grossed out, but he was stunned when Mike revealed that the tomato sauce was canned. Basically, his entire dish wasn't fresh. And the only thing Chef Ramsay could think of doing was this. Come on, that was a joke. Mike, who lost the round to Kashia, was offended with Chef Ramsay's reaction to his dish. Instead of just going back in line, Mike started to vent about the incident, which was all heard by Ramsay. Well, obviously, it didn't really go well from there. What did you just say? Yeah, okay. If you got anything to say to me, say it to my face, not my back. You got it, The first two days, Mike wasn't really seen much. However, on day two, he was seen apologizing to a table after Jean-Philippe forced him to. Apparently, Mike had served the dish to the wrong table. Then, we saw him far more on the third day onwards. During the dinner service, Mike was at the fish station with Chris Eversole. At one point, he told Chris to drop the scallops, even though Chris said it wasn't on order. As a result, Mike became confused like an idiot. No, not on this one. It's a f***ing risotto. Now you confuse me. This was just the beginning of Mike's downfall. Later, he sent out an encrusted halibut that Chris had forgotten to put on. Soon after, Mike delivered another halibut, but had to refire it because Michael DeMarco forgot to leave the bone on the chicken. Anyway, that night, the blue team was kicked out of the kitchen after making several mistakes. During the deliberations, Chris accused Mike of doing nothing the entire night. When Mike reminded Chris about wanting to lead, Jason Zapoltis reminded him that he just stood around doing absolutely nothing. Mike then picked Michael Gabriel for nomination for doing the same amount of work as he did. But Gabriel accused him, like everyone else, of being idle the entire time. But Mike didn't take the criticism very well. He started to get angry, but the blue team was done with him. Soon, things got intense when Jason gave a little message to Mike. Go back to the grocery store, my <laughs> Mike was the undisputed nominee from the blue team, but surprisingly, he survived elimination. Not really because Chef Ramsay thought that he deserved to continue, but because Simone Hammond decided to leave. However, the next day was a different story. During the dinner service, Mike was at the appetizer station with Ralph Johnson. At one point, when Ralph called for a minute on his ravioli, Mike decided to pour them all into a pot early on. And this made Ralph really angry. However, I think the team was better off without his help because Mike ended up sending out a ravioli with no lobster. Ramsey then gave the team one final warning to get a grip of themselves. But instead, Mike, along with Ralph, sent up some watery ravioli. After multiple mistakes from the blue team, Chef Ramsey got the red team to help them out. During the eliminations, Mike was the blue team's first nominee. During his plea, he told Chef Ramsey that nobody wanted help from him. But Ramsey understandably asked him why his teammates didn't trust him. While he said that he didn't know, Jason jumped in and added that Mike failed to do anything of value the entire time. Mike then requested for a transfer to the red team, but the red team didn't want him at all. Since nobody wanted Mike, it doesn't surprise me that Chef Ramsay didn't want him on the show either. While throughout the competition, Mike was highly disrespectful to his teammates, he did the unthinkable after being eliminated. But this next contestant accused Chef Ramsay of sabotaging her. Wow, now that's heavy. Jen Gavin was a contestant in Season 4 who ranked in 4th place. Jen also came back in Season 18 and ranked in 15th place. 
Yeah, Jen knew how to cook and showed quite a few leadership skills, but she wasn't exactly a team player. She often fought with her teammates, disrespected them, and argued with them. As a result, none of her teammates even liked her. Moreover, Jen even argued with the sous chef and didn't even spare Chef Ramsay. On the first day during the dinner service, Jen served as a floater. When she saw Sharon Stewart struggling with the appetizers, Jen started to push Sharon around. Then, both of them gave different timings on their appetizers, much to Chef Ramsay's annoyance. After Sharon started to struggle, Chef Ramsay assigned Jen to the appetizer station. While she claimed to have tremendous skill despite her age, Chef Ramsay discovered that she flipped quail eggs when they weren't even needed. Later, when Chef Ramsay made Rosanne Fama the team leader, Jen was unhappy since he should have chosen her. With her finally sending out a good risotto, the red team started pushing out their appetizers and eventually won the service. In the second episode after losing the challenge, Jen got upset with the red team for choosing Corey early. Corey lost the round to Ben Kaler, and that led to the red team losing. During the punishment, she continued to be a sore loser and blamed Corey for everything. Even though Christina McAmer reminded her that it was a team failure, Jen continued to be mad. All of our fault, we're a team. Sure. But like I said earlier, Jen was a great leader. On day four, Jen was at her best and led her team to victory. She was so good that even Chef Ramsay praised her for it. During the dinner service, Jen was at the appetizer station. Right from the very beginning, she was very vocal with the team. She gave clear instructions to Roseanne and Shayna Zadok and communicated very well. Because of Jen's strong leadership, the red team managed to complete the service. They even had time to help the blue kitchen out. Well done! Yes! Get in there and help them! Move! From day 7 onwards, however, there was a change in Jen's attitude. She started to become very unbearable. During the next dinner service, when the red team moved on to the entrees, Jen told Roseanne not to fire her order yet. But Chef Ramsay wasn't happy about this and schooled her. I'll call out the order, you f***ing cook, okay? Yeah, yeah. Let's get that right. Soon after, when Christina asked for the timing, Jen became unresponsive and clammed up. She even started to get angry with Chef Ramsay. Some time later, when Roseanne sent out some raw langoustine, Chef Ramsay pulled the red team over to make them touch it. But when Chef Ramsay saw Jen walking away, he accused her of giving up. However, instead of just getting her act together, Jen made the mistake of trying to talk back. And Chef Ramsay didn't think twice before shutting her down. But it looks like the pressure was getting to Jen and she was turning into a confused mess. When Chef Ramsay asked for the garnishes, Jen wasn't ready and this pissed him off. Due to her lack of communication, he berated her. You're one f cocky lady and someone knows Jack you know that. Jen obviously wasn't happy with how Chef Ramsay was belittling her. Despite all of the problems, it was surprising to see the red team win the service. After the elimination round, Chef Ramsay asked the red team who wanted to switch over to the blue team. Knowing how much the red team disliked Jen's attitude, Corey tried to convince her to volunteer, which irritated Jen. However, the next morning, Jen surprisingly volunteered to go to the blue team. But once there, rather than trying to get along with the team, Jen started to get on their nerves. During the 20 ingredients challenge, Jen picked everything from her dish without asking anyone. At one point, when Bobby Anderson revealed that his veal was subpar, Jen arrogantly suggested that La Rosa Drellin could do some surf and turf with it. With only a few minutes left for plating, Jen got annoyed with La Rosse since he wasn't doing things correctly. When the time was up, La Rosse forgot to add the veal, and Jen tried to convince him to lie to Chef Ramsay that he used 5 ingredients instead of 4. However, La Rosse didn't take Jen's advice and told Chef Ramsay the truth. And this made Jen furious. As a result, the blue team was disqualified since La Rosse hadn't added the veal. During the punishment, Jen constantly complained about the loss and even gave attitude to Jean-Philippe. When Jean-Philippe inquired about if she would be sour all day, this is how she reacted. I think it's not fair for your colleagues. It's not fair that I'm here, so whatever. My dish was flawless. Later on, Jen and La Rosse were constantly picking on each other. The next day, during the relay challenge, Jen was getting on her teammates' nerves yet again with her attitude. Ouch! 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 As soon as I left that kitchen, I said, you got all your stuff here. You don't have to run for nothing. And uh, it was up to her. She was confident about her dish, but when it came to judging the scallops, Chef Ramsay noticed that the scallops were raw in the center, and Jen wasn't happy about this. Then, when Ramsay was about to judge her John Dory, he noticed that the sauce was missing. Jen then mumbled something under her breath, and Chef Ramsay schooled her for giving him an attitude. Come on. We're in a professional establishment. Chef, no sauce. I forgot. I burnt it. The following day, Chef Ramsay announced the Create Your Own Menu Challenge. Jen, as usual, wasn't being a team player and completely disregarded her team's input. 
The menu was rejected by Chef Ramsay anyway, since he found it to be hideous. Jen continued on with her sour attitude throughout her time on Hell's Kitchen. And finally, her time on the show ended on day 12. Despite having a good start, Jen couldn't sustain her performance and ended up being the team's first nominee. During her plea, she called herself a great team player, which we all know was a big lie. But do you know what's not a lie? The fact that I appreciate your support. So as a thank you for all the effort I put into these videos, be sure to drop a like and subscribe for more. It's completely free, so why not just do it? With that out of the way, let's reveal what happened to Jen. That very night, Jen was eliminated for her poor attitude and terrible collaborative skills. However, Chef Ramsay did praise her for her growth and for finally listening. Later on, Jen came back and her attitude was just as awful. However, this time around, her stay was really short. On day 3 during the dinner service, she was constantly arguing with sous chef Jockey. What's more, when Chef Ramsay pointed out that Jen didn't send enough portions of garnish for two entrees, Jen did something unthinkable. She accused Chef Ramsay of sabotaging her. Who even does that? This infuriated Chef Ramsay to the point that he eliminated her right on the spot. I wonder what made her so sour. I mean, in season 4, Jen did come across as a passionate chef who was there to make a good impression. But when she came back in the 17th season, everyone expected her to redeem herself. Red team. Chef Ramsay has managed to create quite a few intense challenges for aspiring chefs on the show. However, this challenge from season 1 was such a hit that it went on to become a staple in most of the seasons that follow. Being the first season, the contestants obviously had no idea what to expect from the show. Maybe that explains why this season had one of the poorest starts in the history of the show. The contestants were so terrified that both teams had managed to miserably fail three consecutive dinner services. Talk about a rough start. Things had gotten so stirred up that several contestants were booted from the show during this time. With Chef Ramsay down their throats, nothing seemed to be getting better. That was until the fourth episode when both teams finally succeeded in pushing out good food on time. What a relief that must have been. Although this didn't last very long since the blue team was incredibly incompetent. On the other hand, the red team had managed to make history on the show by completing every single order they had received. After a very unexpected elimination and a couple of heated moments, Chef Ramsay decided that it was time to raise the stakes. And well, that's when he decided to reveal the next challenge. That being the pasta making challenge. Chef Ramsay went ahead and demonstrated how to make fresh pasta from scratch. Right from the bowl of dough to the kneading to those beautiful strands of pasta. If there's anyone who could make pasta, it definitely has to be the famous chef. I mean, just take a look at this. I feed it through. Okay, Chris. Yes, chef. <laughs> Arms <Nice>. out. <laughs> it looks like Ramsay was in a great mood, and this moment definitely called for some fun. Now look at him now. What a handsome fucking bugger. Yep, handsome indeed. But jokes aside, would the teams be able to deliver? Each of the teams were given a limited amount of time, 20 minutes to be exact, to create as much fresh pasta as they could. After this simple explanation, both teams were provided with everything that they needed for the challenge. They got everything from the flour, to the oil, to even the pasta making machine. Soon after, Chef Ramsay asked the teams to set up before he started the countdown. At the end of the challenge, Ramsay would weigh the amount of pasta each team had rolled out, and the team with the most would win the challenge. But here comes the twist. The contestants had to match Chef Ramsay's standards in quality and not just the quantity. And well, given the time that they had, this was truly going to be fun. What's more, the challenge required one of the members from each team to stand still and double up as a sort of pasta stand. Jeremy Madden was asked to be the pasta stand for the red team, while Andrew Madden would take on the same role for the blue team. When Chef Ramsay gave them the go ahead, both teams immediately started to get their hands messy. Let the machine do the work, yes? I got it, I got it. It was crucial to ensure that the pasta would be rolled out on time, so none of it would clump up. And this was the key to winning the challenge, since none of the clumped up ones would be accepted in the final weighing. Both teams were in a heated race, trying to do the most with the short 20 minutes that was given to them. You could see Michael Ray whipping the hell out of his pasta machine, since this is how he was feeling. There was so much adrenaline trying to get that pasta out, but I didn't even feel my arms. I was just trying to move as fast as I could. Getting those beautiful strands out of the machine was just the beginning. Because, well, once the pasta was cut, it had to be hung to dry out immediately to ensure that they wouldn't stick together. And this is where the competition gets even tougher. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Other way, other way. Just slice it and get rid of it. Let's go! Once the timer ran out, both teams were asked to come forward and weigh their pasta. That's in. 
The blue team went first and managed to weigh in at 2.41 pounds. And it was now time for the red team. Do you think they whipped out more pasta than the blue team? Well, the red team had already hit the 2.31 pound mark and they had another batch of pasta that was yet to be weighed. This could really be a game changer. It was a make or break situation and both teams were anxious to see the result. But when Chef Ramsay picked the last batch of pasta up, this is what happened. That's uncookable. Another big knot. Not after not. The red team had quite a lot of pasta discarded and finally managed to weigh in at 2.39 pounds. They were now a few ounces short of beating the blue team and there were only a few strands of pasta left with Chef Ramsay. And after a neck-to-neck -neck battle, Chef Ramsay finally announced the results. Red team. 2.45. The red team managed to take the cake, but this challenge will always have a special place in my heart for its intensity, but also for how fun it was. It was one of the few times when Chef Ramsay showed the world what a fun guy he could be. So each of you have whopping $10. Yep, you heard that right. Each contestant only got $10 to cook up a Hell's Kitchen worthy dish for the win. The dishes would be judged by a panel of three gourmands who would taste, judge, and then give the dish a price. Whatever amount they state is what they would be willing to pay at a restaurant for it. This was no regular challenge, this was a challenge with a purpose. It wasn't only to test their abilities, but also to prepare the contestants to create a cheap meal that would pass off as gourmet. With just $10 in their hand, do you really think these contestants were gonna succeed? The contestants immediately started scrambling for their ingredients while also keeping the budget in mind. You can cut it in half. This challenge is about value. Ideally, they should have already had a fair idea of what they were about to serve, and each of them had a limited amount of time to fill their baskets. But one contestant was about to make a huge mistake. Find something cheap is better. I did find some frozen ravioli. Really? Frozen? Well, I hope he knows how much Chef Ramsay hates frozen food. I mean, he wouldn't have asked the contestants to go to a supermarket with the best fresh produce if he was looking for frozen food. We'll just have to wait and see how this one turns out. After the chefs had chosen their ingredients, each of them had a total of 30 minutes to cook the dish that they'd envisioned. All of the contestants managed to create a dish worthy of the gourmands, but Jason Ellis, as expected, managed to mess things up. It's an average price of $16. Ouch. The remaining contestants wowed the judges with their dishes that were on par with each other, with each of them getting close scores. Benjamin Knack placed in fourth with his ratatouille dish, followed by Autumn Lewis's veal dish. Both the dishes were given a markup of $25 and $27.33, respectively. Jay Santos's lamb dish finished second with a markup of $28.66, and Holy Ugald's tuna soared past every other dish with a crazy average of $29.66. One of the judges was so impressed that she gave it an unreal price. I'm excited by it. I would say I would pay 32 for this. Wow, considering how this dish was prepared with a mere $10 budget, it really says a lot about Holly's intelligence as a chef. This challenge pushed Holly up the scoreboard and she finished like the winner she already was. What a well-deserved candidate to sweep away the season's title. Sharing her experience on the show in an interview, Holly said, Going from horrible to being able to win all the challenges individually really did grow the most. Chef Ramsay was looking for someone he could mold into the position he wanted for his restaurant. And from baking pastries to making full course meals, Holly fit Chef Ramsay's requirements like no other. Tracing her growth on the show, one fan wrote, Congrats, Holly. Growing from pastries to cooking is one thing. Doing it under the flying spit of Chef Ramsay is another. You truly are a kitchen warrior. And I can agree more. So these were some of the best challenges on Hell's Kitchen. But who knows, there may be more challenges that are even crazier than these in the future.